So I've been playing with this Atom Stack M4. It's a 20 watt diode fiber laser. And it's kind of fun because it's the first time I've had something new in the shop in quite a while. New in the sense that um, I've never played with a fiber laser before. Like, it's been a while since I've had a tool that's just a whole new category. Granted, I've used lasers, but this is different in several ways. One being a fiber laser, so it has a regular diode, but it has um, this special fiber tube sort of thing that amplifies the laser. And also because of the wavelength, it can engrave metal, which is something I've never played with a laser, fiber laser that can engrave metal. And also this is a galv galvanometer <laughs> galvanometer laser so instead of like a whole gantry like a cnc where the head you know moves around and has stepper motors uh the beam is consistent and there's some mirrors in here with little motors that just kind of flash that mirror around so it works super fast and everything's kind of stationary the only moving part is that mirror not the laser head or gantry or everything so i've been playing with uh this thing let me let's engrave a few things real quick so pretty much anything metal or any coated metal it can go through but coated metal isn't that special because you know diode lasers co2 lasers pretty much anything will burn the coating off of metal but to actually etch the metal itself, that's where a fiber laser is really cool because of the wavelength. It's got a few tricks that help make it really easy to use. There's actually two lasers here. One that's perfectly in line with where the laser is that would etch, and then this laser that comes out the back. And that's nifty because that is your our little focus aid. So there's a knob on the side, and I just turn that knob and I can raise the head up or down. And once those lasers are right on top of each other, I'm um, at the proper distance so that way the laser will be in focus and will be able to etch. So that makes focusing and getting your distance correct super, super easy. And the nice thing is this is geared so it moves really slow so that makes it easy to dial these guys right on top of each other to be in perfect focus. Of course, sort of the downsides with that is as you can see we have like 11 centimeters of range here so like four inches um, so to crank, if you're really changing your level, having to crank that whole way, um, it takes a lot of cranks, it's kind of slow. Of course, one of the things I'm curious about is this, you know, laser beam and changing the focus is, does the beam that comes down is vertical, does it stay aligned or does that move as they change focus and the height is just the focus? Well, and the reason that's important is like, let's say this hammer, this isn't very flat and it's a little rounded and it would take a lot of work to get this balanced in there perfectly level and in plane with the laser. But there's sort of a trick to get around that. Or if you have a curved surface, if it's not flat, you can't get it in plane. So the nice thing is, since when we adjust the height, we're only changing focus, the beam stays in the exact same place. What that let me do is with this uh, hammer that I engraved kind of cheesily with ha hammer time, um, as you watch the video, you'll see I do multiple engraves and I start with it all the way up and then I just lower the focus so that way where it's farther from the laser head, um, that area becomes in focus. You see it kind of engraves and it engraves really good as I pull the focus into it and just do a series of burns to get down to it. And that lets me set anything here and then run through the depth. For example, I have another curved object, um, this flask, which of course has a curve, and I was really concerned. So on this one, because the difference in height isn't very dramatic, I just set the focus to sort of the middle so that the top and the ends are a little out of focus, the middle's in focus. But overall, it's close enough, I, I really can't even tell. But I could use that same approach on this as I used on a hammer or with something that's more curved where you just start at the highest point or the lowest point, do a burn, adjust it, burn again, adjust it, burn again, just do a series of them. And the nice thing is like metal's tough enough even though this is etching it, it's not so strong that you're gonna have to worry about blowing through your metal or cutting through it or anything. So to do four or five burns isn't that big of a deal. And you can also um, crank up your speed or dial down the power so that way less energy is going into the object. And if you're going to be doing a series of burns and even though some of it's out of focus, you just realize you're gonna be kind of piling it on. That's another way to get some more utility out of this. So that was one reservation I had is how is this gonna do on curved objects? Because I see this being a piece you use for 
customizing other objects. Again, it doesn't really cut, so you're just gonna take things you wanna personalize or customize, throw them on there and do it. And if you can only do flat work, that's kind of limiting, but being able to adjust on the fly and do some curved work makes it really useful. But um, just for some ideas, I got a few other little flat pieces. Um, off camera, when I was just experimenting, uh, I took this little pool saw and put my name on both sides. So that was pretty nifty. And then my wife is a seamstress, her hobby is sewing, and she's got some super fancy scissors. So I asked her, hey, you got anything metal that uh, you want me to personalize, put your name on or anything, like maybe some scissors? She's like, oh yeah, if you could do them to my nice ones, that'd be really cool. So yeah, I found a nice little script and ran it on it. I should have shrunk it a little bit and maybe slid it over some, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool and she's happy with it. So that's what really counts. So that's just um, style and taste though, and getting better with, with placement. But overall, this thing has been super easy to use and set up. Uh, it was only like 10 screws or so, not even that maybe. I just screwed this post onto the base and then there's like one big screw that holds this head onto the frame. And also I've got this registration piece clamped on, but you can see this little plate on the bottom lifts out. So if you had like a big stainless table or countertop, that you wanted to engrave, you could just pop that out, set the focus, and you can engrave through this panel if you're engraving on something larger. Um, it also has a functionality where you can take it off and then use this handheld with a cone that provides the proper spacing. I'll probably never do that because um, you, you'd have to have ridiculously steady hands. There's a button for repeatability, so you could, you know, do a burn and then go to something and push the button on the side and hand hold it in place, but I don't know how in the world you're gonna hold it perfectly steel and I never try to hand hold the laser anyway, so I don't see that being a big deal. But if that's something you're trying to do, it does offer that functionality. The only sort of downside I see to this is the software package that comes with it. Um, text is easy, basic shapes are easy. You can import DXFs, but it won't take AI Adobe Illustrator files. It won't take SVG files. Um, it's supposed to work with bitmaps and JPEGs and PNGs and be able to convert those so you can kind of run images. But the images always came out um, the logos I put in, I have quite a few logos I try to run, they, they kept running backwards and I couldn't get it to flip, so it's probably some user error. So yeah, that's the biggest downside is just the software that's available for it. But the good news is Lightburn, the laser software I like to use, is actually working with the company BSL that makes a software this does use called CCAD. So Lightburn will have CCAD board functionality fairly soon, hopefully in the next few months. So definitely be able to do a lot more with this once they add that functionality and have a better software package. It's more easy to use that I know how to use. But otherwise, um, it's pretty unreal to be able to get into a fiber laser and to be able to etch and customize, personalize metal for less than $1,500. Like for any other fiber Galvo machine, you're looking at you know 3,000 kind of entry level to get into so this is pretty unreal that you know at a very reasonable cost you can start customizing metal and engraving metal sorry for that kind of sounds kind of silly it's just something i've always i've wanted to be able to do for quite a while but um just as sort of a novelty i couldn't drop you know three four five thousand dollars on a machine that could really do it but you know, 1500 bucks and it's something you can have in, in your shop now. And also with the hammer, the other thing I was curious about, and this did well, was as you see, this hammer's like, I don't know, 15 years old or so. So it was fairly corroded and just gunked up and been pounded, but uh, it burned right through all that, got down to clean metal. So you don't have to worry about only working on brand new pristine objects. If you got something um, that's, old or you kind of like patina but you want to burn through the patina on something and personalize customize it it'll do that just fine but yeah the atom stack m4 if you've been wanting to get into you know engraving metal and playing with fiber lasers this is a very affordable uh, entry level kind of machine 70 millimeter by 70 millimeter area so just under three by three so pretty decent range once you get up to like those more expensive machines you're looking at two to three times the size to be able to engrave but uh, that really just depends on what you're doing like even three almost three by three is pretty 
large for most personalizations, I would say. And again, you're looking at half the price of the uh, other category of machines. So pretty amazing. And I'll have links below. Um, this is coming out around the holidays and I believe they have quite a few specials and stuff going on. So be sure to check those out because if you are thinking about getting one you know, around the holidays is always the time to do any of those kind of purchases for tax reasons and also all those sales are going on. So anyway, yeah, hope you uh, learned something, were inspired or at least entertained. Until next time, make time to make something.